Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and today we are installing a five channel amplifier on this 2016 Ford F-150. In this install, we're gonna show you how to install the amplifier to two subwoofers that we're installing underneath the back seat and powering all the door speakers. Let's get started. Now some of the parts that we're gonna need for our install here today, first and foremost, the amplifier that we've decided to go with is this Pioneer GMD9705 five channel amplifier here. So that'll be powering everything here in the system. We have that already unboxed here. Now for supplying power to this amplifier, we're using a new concepts, OFC four gauge amplifier wiring kit. Um, we'll have all this linked down in the description in case you wanna purchase these on your own. Uh, but this is a great kit. Again, full copper kit, uh, supplying the right current to our amplifier here. Comes with all the wiring needed. Now our speaker wire here, we're actually going with this uh, copper nine conductor cable. Essentially here, all your wiring, um, all your speaker pairs are in a shielded wire all together. And uh, we're gonna be using this as our speaker wire output from our amplifier. Um, our kit comes with two channel RCs, but that's not gonna cut it for our five channel amplifier. So we picked up the Stinger uh, six channel here. Four channels are for the interior speakers and two channels are your mono for your sub. And because this is a Ford and Fords now have aluminum bodies, um, the ground here, we're gonna run our own ground back up to the battery along with our power wire here, just an extra ground wire, um, just because aluminum isn't as conductive as um, steel or copper would be. So what we're gonna be doing is, along with our power wire, running our ground as well, all the way up to the battery. So the first thing that we're gonna do is show you where we're gonna mount our amplifier and subwoofer in the back, back behind the seat. Okay, so we're back here. We've already started test fitting our subwoofer in its own spot. Now we'll pull this on back just so you have better access here. Now what we're installing are these two Alpine Type S subwoofers here. These are the 10 inch models. And what we're required to do, depending on your trim level, you may have something here, you may not have anything here. We had a little beam that went across to create this as like a pocket that we had to remove. Um, but essentially this kit, which we'll link in the description in case you wanna pick one up, fits in this location here, which is super nice. That's how it fits. So as we pull this on back, essentially here we have a lot of space. You can add amplifiers. We are actually just put ours on the floor because it still fits great. You could build an amp rack here to put the amplifiers against the back here. You don't want to screw through the back wall of the truck, but we're gonna mount ours to the floor and we're gonna use some ABS plastic just to secure it there on the floor. It's really not gonna go anywhere. Um, so what we're gonna do first and foremost is head up underneath the hood and show you um, our plan for the power. Okay, wire. so up underneath the hood here on the passenger side is our battery and we have a nice stud that we can uh, connect our power wire here to. Now for a firewall access, depending on your install, you could go through the grommet on this side or the other side, just depending on what's easier for you and where you're mounting the amplifier. Here is the other side here. Now on the driver's side, what's nice, it already has a protrusion there on the factory grommet that you can cut into to run your own wiring through. So that's probably your safest location to run wire through. So what we're gonna do is we'll connect our power there through an inline fuse, go up and over and mount it to the firewall here, up and over, and then we're gonna go through that um, grommet, through the cab to the back seats to the amplifier. So let's start running power cable. All right, so we're now prepared to start running wire through our uh, firewall into the engine bay. So I have all our wiring here on the floor. Now up underneath the driver's side is our um, grommet. And what I've done with the hanger here is I've, I've cut a hole with a little razor blade through the access port. And I got some soapy water I sprayed up there just with a spray gun. And I got it all nice and slippery. Now what I've done with our wire here is with this wire, I've taped our four gauge to it and we'll get this all slippery too. So we can pull that on through and we'll show you where that goes through on the other side. Okay, so up underneath the hood, kind of zoom in for you a little bit. 
kind of right there if I get that to focus. There is a little blank there that I cut off which exposed that hole. Now with that nipple that was cut off, this is the wire that came through and it goes through the other side. What we're gonna do is use this wire, this kind of hanger wire, to pull our power wire up and through the firewall. All right, so we pulled that on through just like we showed you with that wire. Um, again, it's in your best interest to make sure it's nice and slippery because rubber on rubber trying to go through that grommet is really difficult. So we got that all taken care of and we just kind of for now just draped it over here before we secure it just to the battery area because we need to create a fuse holder, mount location and get our wire all wrapped in the split loom. Now what we're gonna do at the same time is run our ground wire because again remember we're dealing with an aluminum body here so we're just going to run a direct lead right to the ground of the battery to the amplifier just so our uh, amplifier has great continuity okay so we got both our four gauge power and ground up through up and over start aluminum our wires and so at this point, we'll cut the length as soon as we have decided exactly where wires are gonna be routed, but we'll zip tie them up and across over the engine there. Now we're gonna mount our fuse holder. We're gonna use this solid plastic. We're gonna create a little fuse mount to mount the fuse holder there to go up right to the stud. And then we'll have enough length for the ground to come all the way here as well. And we'll make sure we go up through the sensor so the sensor um, can tell that we're drawing more power with our amplifier. So we gotta make sure uh, we utilize that as well. So um, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and start mocking up a fuse holder uh, mount there where we can mount the fuse holder and then we'll be able to cut our wires to length. All right, so we uh, created a fuse holder here, used some ABS plastic and mounted it to the battery box there. So it's nice and sturdy. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we'll run a line up here, right to that positive stud. And then for the negative here, we're gonna run it along go up through our sensor and it'll go to that stud right there as well. We're prepping our wiring ends here and uh, we are using wire ferrules just to protect our wire and then we'll heat shrink there as well. So we got to prep our end here and then prep our end here and do that small length that'll go to the positive post here on the terminal. So let's get those ready. All right, so we're here at the bench. Now the way that we like to terminate our ends, uh, we have a Really nice end. This is the lead that'll go from the fuse holder to the positive post on the battery. If we pull this on back, we got this nice and crimped, but essentially here on this end, so what we've done is we've cut our wire back about the length of the ferrule using some just big gauge wire cutters. We sh pull the shielding off, then we slip our ferrule up and over the wire. Then we use a piece of heat shrink, quarter inch heat shrink not that long, and then we use the heat gun here um, and shrink it down. So essentially here we have our lead that'll go from the fuse to the positive post. So we need to do the same end on the other end of the wiring that goes from their fuse holder all the way to the amplifier. So that end at the fuse holder, we're gonna go ahead and put a ferrule on as well. All right, so we went ahead and got our fuse holder mounted and wire in it. Power going through, nice short lead up to the battery zip tied it up. We use those mounting posts as our anchors. So it goes up into the positive and then the negative comes up through the sensor to the negative post on the battery. So basically until we're ready to put the fuse in at this point we're done up underneath the hood. Um, once uh, the amplifier is all hooked up and good to go and no other connections need to be made then we can put our fuse in. So at this point of time, let's go to the other, the other end where those wires go through the firewall and begin running those to the amplifier. So our wires now from the engine bay go through that grommet and are down here. And we just ran them the length here because we need to start tucking them under panels. But they go all the way back towards the rear. So since we're going to run things up underneath the panels, these just are held on with clips. So let's go ahead and pop our panels out.
Okay, so we finished running our wire all the way up and we came out there. Now, our ground wire from our battery comes to this point because what we're gonna do, we still want to ground our amplifier to the body, but at the same time, because the body's aluminum and the, most of the truck is aluminum nowadays, we're gonna use this as a distribution and still run our own ground right to the battery. So what we're gonna do is this is our our line right from the battery. And we're gonna go right to that stud. And then this is going to be to our amplifier and we're gonna go to that stud. So we're usually basically using this stud as our um, distribution, if you will. Uh, what we're gonna do is remove this bolt and clean up the paint using a wire brush. And then we're gonna install both grounds to that location. And then finally here, our ground to our amplifier and our power to our amplifier are now in place so we can start mounting our amplifier from this point forward all we have to do is run our speaker output from the amplifier and our rcas to the amplifier we're going to run that on the passenger side all the way up to the center console now let's quickly go ahead and get this uh, this on out we're not going to spend a ton of time showing you this because it's in the other video, but essentially you'll pop this top on out. Now there's going to be some seven millimeter screws there on the top, which we've already removed. And then here in the front, you're going to have three clips that will need to be unclipped. What we're going to do is just set this off to the side just to give us a little bit of space. There's going to be two screws here at the top. Go ahead and remove those two seven millimeters. Give this on a tug. We have to disconnect our harnesses here. Okay, so with the bezel removed, what we're gonna do is pull the radio, again, screws up and around the sides here, all seven millimeter. All right, so we're here back at the bench. Since we've now finished up power and ground for our amplifier, now we would need to work on speaker wire output as well as feeding our amplifier signal through these RCAs. Now what's cool about this speaker wire, this is not called nine conductor or multi-conductor speaker wire, it has nine conductors. Now why nine instead of eight? Because speakers need a positive and negative wire. The ninth conductor is for remote turn on, which is conveniently also included within this bundle. Now what we've also done is we've pulled our wiring harness adapter out of the truck itself. Um, in this last segment you saw us quickly pull everything apart and we pulled out our wiring harness adapter. Essentially this end plugs into our aftermarket radio and this end plugs into the truck. Now what we're going to do is still use this obviously with our aftermarket radio but at the same time we're going to modify it and run our own amplified signal from the amplifier through this harness to the rest of the car instead of running new wire to each individual speaker. It's just going to save us a ton of time. Now if you're running a factory radio you don't have an aftermarket radio like what we're doing you can use a T harness to essentially plug in one end to behind the radio and then the other end will plug into the truck and you can modify it the T harness if you want to see what a T harness looks like for this F-150 we'll include the link in the description so you can check one out all right so what we've done is removed the tape off our harness and since our Pioneer has a built-in amplifier that we're not gonna be using anymore, we'll go ahead and cap off our Pioneer's radio power and uh, we'll cap them off and retape them up and they won't be used. So the speaker wire outputs of our radio will be terminated right there. And on our wiring harness side, remember this end plugs into the truck. This, these leads here will go through the harness into the truck to all our doors. So rather than running new wire to each individual speaker, this is the solution to doing so. Now the nice thing is our speed wire, we went ahead and pulled off the outer shielding and we have our different speaker wire pairs here. Now fortunately for us, um, these wires match the wiring color of our wiring harness. So what we're going to do essentially here is marry up these wires color for color we're gonna solder them all together and we already put our heat shrink on that we can move up and over those connections. And then once that's done, essentially the other end of this wire will go to our amplifier. This is the speaker wire output 
for our four channels from the amplifier will run through this cable all the way up to the front into the dash through the harness to the doors itself. So what we're going to do at this point in time is get the LED soldered up, get the heat shrink up and over those connections, and shrink the tubes. Okay, so at this point of time, what we've done is soldered up color for color. Now we'll move our heat shrink up and over those connections once those have fully cooled. And we also, as that ninth conductor, hooked up our remote turn on wire to the blue white wire of our Pioneer. So this wire on the other end will go to the remote wire input on the amplifier, triggering the amp to turn on when the radio turns on. So tape this all up, clean it up, and uh, get it reinstalled. Okay, so we have completed our harness. Everything has been wrapped up. This end goes to the truck. Um, other ends plug into the radio and we have our RCAs. Now what we've done is started taping this about every foot to our speed wire. And now at this point, it's time to get it back in the truck and this end will run to our amplifier in the back. Okay, so we've run our cables through and found a little hole in the dash. Makes a right hand turn and up underneath. It comes out there and we zip tied it to that existing wiring all the way down. Makes a right hand turn, goes down, comes out there. And just like the power side, we ran our speaker wire and our RCAs up underneath the panels. Continue along, just like the power side, same process. Made a right hand turn along the back panel there. And our RCAs and our speaker wire come out at that point. We're ready to start hooking up our speaker wire outputs, RCAs, our power and ground, and our remote turn on wire to the amplifier and get it mounted. Ready to hook up the amplifier, so we've got our RCAs there. We have our speaker wires. We already got the uh, end all prepped and ready to go. This end is our remote turn on, and this end is our speaker wires with ferrules on the end. And then we have our power and ground ready to go as well with ferrule connectors on there. Now we built a little lamp board out of ABS plastic, and it'll sandwich between the carpet and the amplifier, it'll hold it in place and it'll sit nice and flat. Um, again, super simple, we're keeping it nice and easy. So really at this point, we're ready to hook up the amplifier and get it all installed. Alrighty, amplifier is in, we just need to clean it up there. We need to tidy up some wiring. Our ABS plastic is sandwiching the carpet. So the ABS plastic is between the, the floor and the carpet pad and our amp is on the top. So it will pinch down as we screw it in. Um, so we're not putting screws through anything and it's nice and snug there too as well. It's a great fit Got all our wiring all done Our seeds hooked up again. We need to still zip tie a couple of things. That's where it will reside up underneath Still need to put some zip ties our speaker wire. Here's our ground distribution that we did again We cleaned up the paint really good with a wire brush and put that grounds there so one ground goes all the way to the battery, the other ground goes to the amplifier. So we can put this carpet back now. Okay, so we are all done here. Got the amp all cleaned up. Everything zip tied and nice and tidy. Got it all mounted. It's not going anywhere. This is great. Put this on up. But you can see from this perspective here. Nice and tucked away. Box is in nice. Now at this point in time, since all our panels are all back together and the amplifier is installed, we need to go ahead and get the radio back in. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We gotta do some tuning, got our subs hooked up. So now we can lay those down nice and flat and put the seat down. Got our radio all back in. It's all done and good to go. Just, uh, Engine running, charging up the battery, but everything's done and attached. Got the fuse in. We're all done underneath the hood. is 
about it for this install. If you have any questions on what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. Um, if you also want to see more on this truck, you can check out our radio install video, like we said before. And also, we did door speakers. We did uh, a front stage, mid ranges in the front doors, as well as tweeters up in the dash and uh, coaxials in the back door. So. Go ahead and check that on out. We'll have all the links in the description as well as links to all the products that we used in today's video. Thanks again for watching. If you like what you saw, be sure to hit that like button and uh, don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. We will see you in the next video.